Reisha, of course, there was a lot to discuss there. We've, we've, you know, uh, there's a lot to expect as and when Trump comes in. As of now, there are, of course, a lot of these performances going on at the moment. I'm guessing this is Kid Rock who's on stage. And uh, we saw earlier saw Hulk Hogan on stage. So it's a complete red wave that we're seeing. This is the RNC. And uh, Trump is expected to speak moments from now. One can expect him to make certain statements which one will be able to gauge what America's ex internal and external policies are going to be based on. It is kind of a window into that. That is what makes it so consequential and pivotal to hear what Trump has to say at this moment. Right, Shivin. Visuals on your screens right now. Longtime Trump supporter Kid Rock is performing at the RNC stage. And we're expecting former U.S. President Donald Trump to speak after this performance. We can see Trump supporters there uh, with bandage on their ears, thumping and supporting the former U.S. President. It does look like that the Republican camp's... Uh, uh, slogan and the agenda of make America great again has somehow taken a shift towards make America one again because we are expecting former US President Donald Trump's speech uh, to largely peg on the theme of unity after the assassination attempt which took place just five days ago and we've seen a lot of these people a lot of the supporters in the crowd you know they're almost wearing that bandage on the right ear as a statement as a statement of support for Trump, that goes without saying, but also as a statement that they wish to fight. And we have heard echoes of those fight, fight, fight chants across the RNC supporters and the people in attendance here as well. It all started in the last five years. And of course, there is lots to discuss and at least one can speculate at this moment what Trump is expected to say. There are a lot of pointers there that one can hope that he would be speaking on. And uh, well, absolutely, according to um, speech experts, uh, they're expecting that the former U.S. President Donald Trump will outline his vision for America and describe the assassination attempt largely on discord and division in a society must be healed. Well, to talk more on uh, Trump's speech, which we are about to witness a short while from now, we're now being joined by Voice of America correspondent Catherine Gibson, live from outside the convention center in Milwaukee. Catherine, uh, going into this final night of the RNC, Democrats' calls are growing louder for President Biden to withdraw from the race. In fact, a latest poll by AP shows that nearly two-thirds of Democrats want him to step down and for the party to nominate someone else. How is that playing out at the convention today? Well, you know, a lot of the delegates that I spoke to here at the Republican National Convention didn't address the Biden issue too terribly much. They were far more focused on the assassination attempt on President Trump last weekend. So many of them felt so grateful to be here. They talked about how they felt that this gave even more energy to the campaign, that they were going to go out into the country for the rest of this election season and talk about and share with undecided voters how they felt about President Trump and how they felt that this was an important turning point in his candidacy, that he was changed by it somehow. And that's the message that we've been told to expect here in Milwaukee, is that instead of delivering attacks against President Joe Biden, he's going to be delivering a message of unity, bringing all Americans together and talking about his America First agenda that focuses on the needs of American voters here at home rather than the U.S. getting involved in foreign conflicts. Catherine, it's interesting, you know, you, where, where you're standing, it's right outside the convention center. We see the, the vehicle behind you saying, make America great once again. Of course, that's the sentiment inside as well. But uh, you mentioned earlier that, you know, how most of the people you spoke with, none of them are bringing up the Biden issue too much. Is Biden not an issue for the Republican camp anymore? That and also do talk to us about what to expect from Trump's speech, which is uh, scheduled to start moments from now. Absolutely. So uh, right behind me, as we understand it, there is still a musical performance going on. Trump has not yet taken the stage. Some of the delegates that I spoke to here in Milwaukee said that, well, this would be this election would be a referendum on the Biden presidency. They were far more focused on the future, on looking ahead to what President Trump would do in a second term, bringing Ameri the American economy as they saw it back to the strong position that happened during his first term, that they would stop getting involved in foreign conflicts, that there would overall be a sense of hope 
that they at least have felt hasn't been happening during the Biden presidency. So while there is some mention of President Biden, they haven't been really talking about whether or not he's going to step aside because as they see it, the delegates see it, President Trump is going to win regardless. You're standing outside, so I just wanted to let you know, in, uh, we have visuals in front of us with Dana White on stage. He's the president of the of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Of course, we know that Trump has made his way to several of these high-profile fights which the UFC hosts, and this time we see Dana White on uh, the RNC stage. At the moment, of course, there is a lot of support that you know, Trump has had from several people across different industries. We also saw Hulk Hogan standing here earlier. We saw Kid Rock performing just moments ago. Uh, what kind of a sentiment do you find Trump bringing in? Because this is an America which we've not seen in the last few years. The kind of atmosphere that we're seeing here at the RNC at this moment. And does that give a glimpse of what kind of external and internal policies Trump would be coming with? I don't think anybody should be reading into what kind of policies that Trump would be advocating because of the guests that we've seen here. I think that these are people that are drawn to the Trump brand, so they are chosen to speak at the Republican National Convention. And we certainly have had an atmosphere here in the U.S. as the nation climbs out of COVID of, you know, lightness, of joy. This isn't a turning point as I see it. The thing that has struck me, having covered the 2016 convention in person, that was a much darker Republican National Convention. Mm. The speech that Trump gave on that final evening was much darker, talking about American carnage, talking about the blood in the streets. We have been led to expect, and you know, obviously he hasn't spoken here yet tonight, that, that this tonight will be a very different tone, that it will be more a tone of unity, mm. partly in, because of the assassination attempt that he underwent last weekend. So I'll be very interested to see if there's a contrast. Right, Catherine, it does look like that Republican camp slogan will shift from Make America Great Again uh, towards Make America One Again. Now, after the convention, uh, Trump will hit the campaign trail again. How has the assassination attempt last weekend changed the campaign, changed their approach to the events? Well, after I'm here in Milwaukee, I'm going to fly right back to Washington, D.C., where we're going to have a series of oversight hearings on Capitol Hill U.S. lawmakers, particularly Republican lawmakers, have demanded answers from the United States Secret Service about how there could be a security failure of this magnitude. They're going to be investigating how that shooter was able to get so close to former President Trump and see if there are any security breakdowns at the local level. Remember, it's not just the United States Secret Service that protects the president at those rallies, but they also bring in police enforcement from the local areas. So there are still a lot of questions. We can expect certainly a amped up security atmosphere when former President Trump does go out on the campaign trail. And remember, he'll also have his vice presidential candidate campaigning with him, J.D. Vance. So even more security for the United States Secret Service to worry about. Now, I know at this point, it is a bit too early to be discussing it, but I do want to get your thoughts on this because this is something which is coming up again and again, at least on the global stage. Ukraine seems to be quite unnerved with Trump's presidency. Uh, I just want to understand, is there any word that you've heard uh, regarding how Trump would want to deal with the ongoing war with Russia between Ukraine and Russia? Well, you know, the vice presidential candidate, J.D. Vance, who is just named as the vice presidential candidate, has been very, very strong about the U.S. not getting involved in foreign conflicts. He has uh, decried U.S. sending aid to Ukraine. That's going to be a major issue. We're hearing tonight that President Trump has a call scheduled with President Zelensky sometime early next week. We'll have a better sense of what the two men have worked out. Of course, remember that President Trump has not been reelected yet. There is still the chance of a Biden or Harris term and Democrats staying in power, which, of course, would be a boon for Ukraine and continuing U.S. aid to Ukraine. Right, Catherine, for the past few minutes, we have been talking about how Trump's speech uh, is pegged on the broader vision of unity. While, while uh, Trump's assassination attempt has united the Republican front, there are divisions within the Democrats with growing calls for Biden to step down. How do you assess that panning out at the RNC today? Well, it's been interesting to see those calls from Democratic lawmakers increase 
Well, the Republican National Convention has been going on. There had been some thinking here in the United States that that would simmer down. The U.S. Congress is out of session. They are not in Washington, D.C. They are all out in their states, and the Republican lawmakers are, of course, here at the Republican National Convention. So the thinking had been that the talks wouldn't be increasing, but we've had a series of interviews from President Biden where he has stumbled over a couple of names, and, of course, he was diagnosed with COVID and has had to go and self-isolate at his house in Delaware. We've heard increasing reports that Democratic leaders, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, have been quietly pushing behind the scenes, making the case to Biden that the polling data they are seeing is saying that he is not going to be able to win in November. And they're very, very concerned that if he is still on the ticket, that he will drag down those down-ballot races, the U.S. Senate races, the U.S. House races. Democrats will not keep control of those two chambers and Republicans will win it all. So they are making that case to President Biden. And he is, of course, has some time to think over those pleas from congressional Democrats.